Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to be doing more aggressive Doom style sound design based on the videos I've already done, expanding on that knowledge and taking it a step further. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a round robin bass instrument from the distortion bass playable section. I'm just going to edit the parameters of the attack and release. I'm going to make a duplicate of this and change the bass sound so that we have a lot of thickness and variety when we play them together. I'm even going to pan one of them left and right a little bit so we get some stereo randomness. I really want this instrument to pop out and be quite plucky, so I'm going to add a percussive layer underneath. I'm going to glue them together with some processing to make sure they don't sound so separate. I'm going to distort this sound many times over, so I like to do it fairly gently to maintain some clarity. This next process works really well into the plugin after it and is a great example of when multiple plugins work really nicely together. I call this a rack and I use this process all the time in my sound design. In this case, the random peaks of the EQ going into this amp distortion make some really cool modulations. These last three plugins, for example, become a chain that I can use on any sound like this, and I'll save this and others like it and randomly insert them into new sounds and new chains to get new results. It's really important for this sound to maintain clarity whilst moving about as much as it can, so I'm going to apply a load of modulations to the top end only, leaving the bottom end untouched. At this point, I'm going to split the chain into two, a low component and a high, and process only the top end then. Here's another ready-made modulation rack I've got where I've got three phases and two cone filters, just moving the sound about as much as possible. This part of the process leaves loads of room for experimentation, so at the end come back here and swap out a load of different plugins and see what different results you can get. The frequencies can go a bit crazy, so some multiband compression at the end here can work really nicely to even things out. I've noticed that a lot of transient and punch processes really require a tiny bit of silence or quietness before each new hit. So I've got a MIDI gate here halfway through the chain that I keep putting on the various stages to make sure there's silence between each new note. This next process is really important and it's something that I use all the time on my sounds and it's a way of sculpting out some attack on each new note whilst retaining some clarity in the decay even if the material going into this chain is particularly distorted like ours. So we start with a low pass and have an envelope do a really quick filter cut off movement so that we get a little click at the start of each note. Then with a the second slower envelope we control the body of the sound and I move the decay of this envelope up and down to get more modulations. Manually moving the filter cut off on top of both of these modulations takes it a step further and you get some really interesting results. Let's flip back to our ARP and see how this applies to our sound. Next up, another ready-made rack of transient designers and compressors just to make sure the sound smacks as hard as possible. We're in the final stages of the sound now, I'm going to add some chorus and some Ubic G movement. The Ubic G is only applying to the tops, so we'll do that classic split the lows, split the highs thing. Lastly, I have a chain of OTT, split EQ, and then two homicides, which are distortions. I find this ruck works really well at the end of chains just to make things loud, aggressive, but kind of clean. The split EQ is affecting only the tail end of the sound and cutting mud from certain frequencies, but whilst leaving the transients alone. At this point, I'm fairly happy with the core sound. I'm going to hit record and start tweaking all kinds of stuff and try and get some core modulations that at the end I can glue together to get a cohesive but interesting loop. The arpeggio sound we've got is quite high octave, so I need some really low bass stabs to kind of glue everything together a little bit.
And lastly, some short glitchy effects on top. Take those three elements and throw them together. I hope that was interesting. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.